ladies and gentlemen, honored veterans, active duty service members, families, and fellow citizens, good morning and welcome to the Veterans Day ceremony here at our beautiful city of Port Wainimi. I am humbled and honored to stand before you as your mayor, representing this wonderful city and all of its residents. Our city and its community have strong ties with the military that calls Port Wainimi its home. We are immensely proud to host such a vital part of our nation's defense. As we understand the sacrifices made by those who serve, as well as their families who stand beside them. Today, we gather here on Veterans Day to pay tribute to the brave men and women who have served in the United States Armed Forces, as well as those who continue to do so. Veterans Day is a reflection of gratitude and respect. It's a day when we honor the legacy of courage and dedication left by generations of service members who have answered the call of duty. Thank you to the veterans, both in our presence and those who couldn't be with us here today. Your service has made an, a lasting impact on our nation and we are forever grateful. Thank you also to everyone that is here, including our distinguished guest, Senator Monique Limon, and her representative, Stephanie Ramirez. Representing Congresswoman Julia Brownlee, Alejandra Mendoza. <laughs> Hannah Elson from the Assembly Members, Steve Bennett's office. <laughs> Our district, district Attorney, Eric Nazarenko. and our supervisor, VNA Lopez. <laughs> represented by Robert. <laughs> and of course, our Port Wainimi City Council members, Steve Gama, <laughs> Laura Hernandez, and Mayor Pro Temp, Missy Perez. Please stand, and will the Wainimi High School and JRLTC please post the colors? Right, right, left, 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 hold right, hop, right, feet, feet, Please join me in the in the Pledge of Allegiance. Place your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now, Amy Davis from the Channel Air Chorus will sing our national anthem. Oh, say does that star's 
we welcome Al Berry from our local VFW to the podium to provide us with an invitation. Almighty ruler of the universe, be with us as we come together this day to pay tribute to those who have served and those who are presently serving in our armed forces. We are grateful for the dedication and commitment and the countless selfless acts they have performed and the sacrifices of their families so that we might continue to enjoy freedom. We thank you for their service to their nation and we thank you for their commitment and service to their families, their communities, and to society in the years since they served. We are mindful of the fact that many of our comrades sacrificed their very lives on the fields, on the seas, and in the air where the battles of the war were fought. We remember those today with great reverence and thanksgiving. We thank you for our great land, for life, for liberty, and the freedom to pursue happiness that constitute the legacy of our forebearers and the ongoing ideals of our republic. Continue your blessing upon us as we conduct this ceremony. Amen. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Alan Berry. I'm a retired Navy CB, and from here in Port Wainimi at the CB base. So with all veterans, I know everybody's standing, so all veterans in attendance, please raise your hand. In 1932, thousands of World War I veterans camped out in Washington, D.C. to petition their government for bonuses that they felt were owed. Their composite was forcibly overrun by the U.S. Army, and at least two veterans were killed by the police. President Franklin Roosevelt told the American Legion National Convention in 1933 that no person, because he wore a uniform, must thereafter be placed in a special class of beneficiaries over and above other citizens. What Roosevelt and others failed to realize at the time is that veterans were not asking to be part of a special class. They just wanted a shot at the American dream that they fought so hard to defend. Eleven years later and 79 years ago, President Roosevelt had a change of heart and signed what many historians considered one of the most impactful social legislation ever passed by Congress the Servicemen's Readjustment Act of 1944, dubbed the GI Bill of Rights. It was signed into law just two weeks after the Allied invasion of Normandy. It offered federal aid to help veterans buy homes, get jobs, and pursue an education in general, helping them to adjust to civilian life again. As popular as the GI Bill remains today, it took the horrific cost and bloodshed of World War II to remind many Americans just how great a debt is owed to our veterans. Most Americans profess to truly love our veterans, and while their feelings are usually sincere, it is important to remember that veterans are defending us 365 days a year. The heroism that has been demonstrated 
time and time again by veterans from the American Revolution to the global war on terrorism is sometimes unnoticed by those of us who enjoy the security that their sacrifice has provided. Veterans Day is a time to remember and honor the heroism and sacrifices of our veterans. Here in Ventura County, we have over 40,000 veterans. You probably unknowingly interact with a veteran daily. It could be the person fixing your car, del delivering your mail, your financial advisor, your doctor, your nurse, your office mate, or many others in a number of daily personal interactions. Veterans are woven into the fabric of our community, going about their lives, not looking to be a special class, but just to contribute to the community. Any day is a good day to recognize and thank a veteran for their service. But on November 11th, please make a point of thanking a veteran. That simple recognition can go a long way. And I'm going to close with this. Happy 248th birthday to the U.S. Marine Corps. <laughs> Next, I'd like to introduce Dave Turner, Chief, Senior Chief Petty Officer in Charge Station of Channel Islands for his Veteran Day remarks. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you to distinguished guests, uh, Senator Ramon, Chief Frederico, and all veterans and supporters of the military. Good morning and thank you for coming out on this beautiful Veterans Day to recognize the brave men and women who have served in our nation's armed forces, Army, Navy, Marine Corps, Air Force, Space Force, and Coast Guard. My name is Senior Chief Dave Turner, and I'm honored to serve as the officer in charge of Coast Guard Station Channel Islands. Station Channel Islands has a small crew of 19 active duty and 12 reserve members who conduct search and rescue and law enforcement operations, including fisheries enforcement and drug interdiction from Point Doom to Point Conception, including several of the Channel Islands. At large, the Coast Guard is a force of 57,000 active duty, reserve, and civilian personnel who serve domestically safeguarding our ports, waterways, commerce, natural resources, and abroad securing our diplomatic and defensive interests in the Arctic, Antarctic, and worldwide, including the Middle East, Caribbean, Pacific Islands, and even in the South China Sea. The Coast Guard has participated in every major conflict this nation has been in and continues to stand the watch around the world as a sentinel against threats of drugs and weapons smuggling safeguarding mariners from threats to life and property at sea, as well as protecting natural resources from illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing, which can dev devastate fisheries, robbing future generations by over-harvesting and de decimating entire species, as well as pushing us further and further into deeper and more hazardous waters to reap the bounty of the sea, once plentiful nearer to shore. Uh, I only recently moved to this area and I will tell you that the support of the military here is evident and it's tangible. Between that and the unmatched Southern California weather, it's easy to see why so many military members decide to stay here long after they leave the service. There may be some of you in the audience who have considered military service. I encourage you to consider it again, or perhaps consider it for the first time. Looking, looking at you guys. Uh, this world has always had uncertainty, and there is much uncertainty now. Without those who stand up and volunteer to defend our freedom, our nation would face more uncertainty still. To those families who support our fighting men and women, whether they be at home or deployed, the spouses covering down when their husbands and wives are away securing our nation, the children who know the pain of missed birthdays and holidays, mothers and fathers who send children off to boot camp, to bases across the country or the womb, or worse, to war, because they believe in this nation they serve and the values inherent within it. A grateful nation thanks you for your endless support and sacrifice. 
Yours is not an easy burden. And to those of you who have served and continue to serve, thank you for your volunteerism, your sacrifice, your patriotism, and your service. The challenges you face are many and growing. Far too few of our fellow citizens seem to be choosing a life or even a tour of military service to this nation. You carry the mantle of those who served before us, who protected us at home and across the globe, carrying hope, freedom, and security with them. You safeguard our nation against all who would do us harm, on land, at sea, and in the skies. I am honored today to recognize America's veterans, both living and those who have passed on before us. Our nation is proud of you and thanks you for your service, bravery, and sacrifice to our freedom. Thank you, Senior Chief Petty Officer Dave Turner. I would like to now invite Senator Limon up for her remarks. Thank you. And, and thank you, Chief uh, Turner, for reminding us what is at stake. I want to thank first uh, the city of Port Wainimi for uh, allowing us space and reminding us um, how important it is to honor our veterans in our community uh, and to do so in a space where we gather as a community to demonstrate that support. I also want to thank the tens of thousands of veterans who have served our country, who have served us, that are here in Ventura County, but also among the Central Coast. Here in the area, we know the importance because we live it as well as knowing as in this district that I represent, there are two uh, military bases and that is critical to our community and we see how important it is to have folks that we support. We're living in a world where we're reminded daily what is at stake. Our veterans defend our democracy, our safety, and our prosperity. And that is something that cannot be lost. And I hope that as we reflect on what is happening around the globe at this very moment, we remember why it is important to uplift our veterans, but also to recognize them, not just while they're serving, but what happens when they come back to our community and how we're able to support. I wanna recognize all our, all our veterans contributions to our communities and applaud the sacrifices. The sacrifices that we just heard, they are daily. They are away from their community, away from their families. And they are put in situations where they don't know what the next day holds or whether they will be able to continue to serve that next day. And it is those sacrifices that we, as community members, benefit from. We are the product of that sacrifice because we are able to be in our communities and to function and to live and to serve in our own way thanks to what our military does and thanks to the veterans who have served. So I want to thank you all again for having me, but also thank the city of Port Wainimi for allowing a space to publicly come together as a community to uplift our veterans and to thank our veterans for their service. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Limon. I would like to now invite Tom Fiala from our local VFW for his remarks. Good morning, everyone. So uh, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about our local VFW. So uh, the, the local VFW was uh, chartered. Well, first of all, the VFW stands for Veterans of Foreign Wars. It's not quite this, it, there's two ways to be in the VFW. Um, there's the post and the auxiliary. The post, and it's not quite this simple, but we're just gonna, for the sake of time, we're gonna, I'm just gonna do this. They're combat veterans. So they all served in combat. Uh, then there, there's the auxiliary, and these are the grandparents, parents, brothers and sisters, wives and husbands, and children, grandchildren of combat veterans. So there's a, there's a third way, which I'll bring up in a little bit. Uh, the VFW 
in Port Wainini was chartered by Congress on October 1st, 1944. To get, put that in perspective, that's 11 months before World War II ended. And it's four years before, it's four years older than the city. So the VFW in Port Wainimi is actually order, older than the city of Port Wainimi. We just celebrated our 79th year. Um, the VFW here, post 3935, is in District 7. District 7 has 17 posts, ranging from Canyon Country all the way to Santa Barbara. Port Wainimi's VFW is the largest of those 17. We have 407 members, post members, and over 200 auxiliary members. Uh, we have a couple advantages. Um, first of all, we're really close to the beach. There's a great beach, like a block away from us. That's pretty awesome. Um, to put that in perspective, the state of Nebraska, Iowa, and Kansas, they don't have any VFWs by the ocean. None of them. But we do. We just got the one. Um, the other advantage is, is we own our property. We paid off the mortgage years ago, so it's ours. Um, we also, VFWs are kind of known for having bars. Um, really, they're canteens. Originally, when the VFWs were established, the idea was the canteen supplied donuts and coffee. Yeah, we ditched that long ago. Now we have beer, liquor, wine. Yeah, there's coffee there too, but you can get coffee if you want. But uh, our VFW is a little bit bigger, or a little bit more than that. The, um, we have a hall, and we run out to weddings. We've actually had weddings there. We've had birthdays, anniversaries, some kind of a celebration. Unfortunately, we also have memorials, but it's available to the public to, to use that. Um, we, we, we do a lot. We, recently, we've been doing a lot more outreach to the community. We have karaoke on Fridays, we have hamburgers on Wednesdays, we have live music on Sundays, but we only have live music on Sundays when the NFL season's not playing. If you want to learn every swear word in the English language, <laughs> try playing having a jazz band playing during, during NFL games. <laughs> Seriously, I've learned all the swear words, even ones I didn't know, if that were to happen. So we do a little bit more. in, in to give a little bit more perspective, last year the VFW donated $250 or more to 23 different charities. There are some, most of them are veteran-related char charities, the Coalition for Homeless Veterans, the Fisher House, the USO. Uh, we also do local stuff. We did the Camarillo Animal Shelter, the Simi Valley Military Museum, the Port Wainimi Little League we donated to last year. Um, we also do a lot of one-off type things. We are doing Thanksgiving in a couple weeks. Al, remind me, we have to get ready for Thanksgiving in two weeks. <laughs> um, we did Project Hero. They were here just a couple weeks ago. They are, are a fun, They do a fundraiser. What they do is they raise money for first responders and veterans with PTSD and help them with therapy. We did a Ride for Red just past weekend, um, which, which is with the Red Cross. Um, we do union meetings, we do staff meetings from the military bases, both of them. Um, and we, we, we open it up to that. We're, we're doing, well, let's see, we're doing a city toy drive. We're going to help out with the city this year. We did this last year, we're going to do it again this year, where we can bring some toys, you know, for Christmas. And then we do flag retirements. Now, on a side note, those of you who don't know me, um, my wife and I moved here three years ago and we got involved with the VFW fairly quickly. And then about a year ago, I ran for city council and I lost. I came in last place. I didn't just lose, I came in last place. One name that kept coming up in both, both situations, whether I was at the VFW or work, uh, working with the city, is a gentleman named Larry Downing. Now Larry is a VFW member and unfortunately, Larry is unable to join us today. He had a family emergency in Arkansas that he flew out on Wednesday, so he's not available, he's not here to, to honor him. So we're going to honor him anyway without him being here. By the way, Arkansas is also a state that does not have any VFWs <laughs> by the ocean. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Um, 
so let's talk about Larry a little bit. So Larry was born in Oregon, and his dad was a World War II veteran. He grew up in Kansas City. He moved to Kansas City soon after that, where he was an Eagle Scout, and he played tackle for high school football, and eventually got a scholarship to the University of Missouri to play tackle. Um, he didn't go. He worked with his family for a little bit. They had a flooring business. He eventually went to um, uh, Missouri State University. Um, he enlisted in the Navy in 1966. He did two tours in Vietnam. He was Navy intelligence. Now, I have written on my cards here. I'm supposed to wait, because I said Navy intelligence. Wait for thunderous laughter to subside. <laughs> but nobody's laughing. So anyway, we're gonna move on. So, uh, so he is one of two Vietnam or uh, veterans in Ventura County that attended the unveiling of the Vietnam Memorial in Washington D.C. in 1992, 1982. I'm sorry. Uh, he was the commander of the VFW in Thousand Oaks. That VFW, unfortunately, doesn't no, no longer exist. But he was the commander when he was there. In the, early, in the late 70s and early 80s, him and his wife, Roberta, um, got involved with the, the Historical Society Museum here in Port Wayne. It's over there on Market and, and um, uh, Hawaii Road. And uh, they were very active with it. And so, on a personal note, I never really met Larry. I talked to him on Facebook. I emailed him. We talked briefly that way, but I never met him in person. I got a chance to meet him a couple weeks ago. We sat down. We had coffee at Starbucks. His dog, Boomer, was there. <laughs> and uh, I got to actually meet him. He is just the nicest guy. He's intelligent. He's honorable. He's just, just a super nice guy. So I would say... If everyone in Port Wainimi was just half the person that Larry is, we'd be in a much better place. So that being said, I'm going to leave. Um, I want to invite everyone to the VFW after this event's over. We have a continental breakfast. Come over, meet some veterans, have some coffee, have a bagel, um, and uh, see what we're all about over at the VFW. It's just down the street. Oh, you know what? I got one more thing to do. In response to Larry, the VFW would like to present Larry with a letter of with a letter of appreciation. I will make sure he gets this when he comes back from Arkansas. Mayor Martinez, I believe you have something for him as well. The city also has a certificate of recognition for Larry Downing, which we'll receive on his behalf and we'll give it to him when he, when he comes back. Thank you, thank you, Tom. Thank you to Larry Downing. And now the Wainimi High School Marching Band will perform American, America the Beautiful.
Amy High School Marching Band. In our closing remarks, I'd like to invite Mayor Pro Tem Perez up, along with Council Member Gama and Council Member Laura Nance. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, as we bring this Veterans Day ceremony to a close, let us carry with us profound gratitude that we feel for the brave men and women who have selflessly served our country. Today, we honor not only their sacrifice, but also the enduring spirit of resilience and courage that defines our veterans. Let us strive to embody the values we fought for, freedom, unity, and justice. May we always remember and appreciate the dedication of our veterans, not just today, but every day. Thank you to all who have served, and may God bless our veterans and the United States of America. Thank you. everybody for being here today. Um, my father served in the Korean War and uh, he uh, passed away in one of the most memorable aspects of the veteran's funeral is the playing the taps of the presentation of the flag to the family and in my case it was to my mother who was here today. And uh, because of my father's service I am a, a member Auxiliary, and we are having a fundraiser on November 18th, enchilada, rice and beans, and salsa. Uh, the, the profits, the proceeds are going to go to benefit the uh, foster children in Ventura County. So if you could put that on your calendar and come on over, we'll feed you and you'll enjoy yourself and you'll get to see what Tom was talking about, the wonderful BFW. Um, my brother, Carl, uh, Sergeant Major Carlos Gama Jr. is here today. And then he's gonna close out this event with TAPS. And TAPS has a number of meanings. Um, it closes out the day in some cases, but when a veteran passes away and they have the funeral, um, TAPS is played and then the, the flag is presented to the family. Um, so we thought, invited my brother here to play taps is a great way to close this out. Um, my brother has an adjunct duty in the military as a reservist, and he has played taps for over 800 veteran funerals, for which I'm extremely grateful for him and his commitment to do that. Because I remember the impact it had on my family when uh, the bugler bugle taps and the the color guard comes over to my mom and says, on behalf of a grateful nation, thank you for your husband's service and things like that. So um, with that, I'd like to introduce my brother, Sergeant Major Carlos Gama, and he's going to close out this wonderful event with taps. with this year's ceremony and I'd like to remind the audience that the VFW will have a meet and greet right after the ceremony. May we continue to honor and support our veterans throughout the year. God bless you. God bless the United States of America. Thank you everyone for being here today.